but it is too late for me now. It's only too late when you're dead. Yeah. But I'm going to die at some time in my life, whether I eat good or don't eat good, right? What's up, YouTube? Holy is Mr. for Life, back with another video. You've been the BBC special that's become better channel by hitting the subscribe and like button for more content. Now, let's get right into the video. What, what, what's, mm -hmm. what are you eating? Big Mac. A Big yeah. Mac? Yeah. Well, that meat, it's gonna make you fat, you know? Yes, but I'm already fat. Obesity and fat is the leading preventable cause of preventable death. Despite the negative effects these conditions can have on one's health, more people are overweight and obese today than ever before in history. You're already fat? But you're going to add fat to your system and tax your heart and liver and kidney more. Yeah. That's going to cause problems. I know. See, that, that meat has chemicals in it and it gets caught up in the fat. And when it gets released, it kind of like destroys your muscles and your bones and your eyes, causing arthritis, high blood pressure, and muscle deterioration. Well, what am I supposed to eat? What are you supposed to eat? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think cows eat hamburgers, and they seem to be quite they healthy. They have the hamburgers. Yeah, that's why they don't eat hamburgers. Because they don't want to put that junk in their system. They wouldn't eat cheese. Cows don't eat cheese. Because they know it's harmful. So now you're eating things that even a cow wouldn't eat. Cow milk makes the human bones weaker and increase the rate of mortality. Keep in mind that between 65 and 75 percent of human beings worldwide don't have the ability to digest lactose after infancy. Lactose is the sugar that's present in milk. Generally, black people are lactose intolerant. In some countries, over 90% of the adult population are lactose intolerant. Cheese and other dairy products have lactose and contribute to the issues that were mentioned. And plus, that's a dead car carcass there. It's like you're using your body as a cemetery and burying a dead cow in it. You should put a tombstone on your head. So I like it. you're controlled by your ignorance. No, I'm controlled because I'm hungry. And, and you're like hungry it. because? Well, it's natural to eat. Oh, mm -hmm. so let us say this is natural to eat. Mm -hmm. So if I gave a, a six-month-old baby or one-year-old child a burger or some alcohol or a cigarette, they wouldn't eat it. They would not eat it. They would, they would say the alcohol burns. They would say the smoke mm -hmm. burns. You can't force a child to eat something that's not unnatural. That's right, but a child doesn't know that a hamburger is unnatural. Yes, it's natural to eat, but choosing to eat unnatural food, processed food, fast food, creates numerous unbalance and illnesses to the human body. That's the key message. Right, because they were, weren't taught to eat the hamburger. Right. You're eating what you were trained to eat, right. like a trained horse. You right. give them a block of sugar and they run around the track. So you're eating like a trained horse but it is too late for me now. It's only too late when you're dead. Yeah. But I'm going to die at some time in my life, whether I eat good or don't eat good, right? It's not over until it's over. Shout out to Lenny Kravis. Gotta check out that song. That doesn't mean that you should give up living. We are indoctrinated to believe that we are going to get sick no matter what we eat or what we don't eat. So we think we're gonna die from diseases and we all normally think everybody dies, so we're gonna have to die from something. So might as well live life, eat whatever we want to eat. With that mindset, so why should I eat health food? And society reinforce this nutritional miseducation thinking. But that's done through the media, that's done through marketing, market, marketing of different food products, marketing of different tastes, creating different tastes, manufacturing different products, food products that that are appealing to the senses so they can actually get people to be hooked on some type of products that they are creating. So which means it's a profit-making industry, it's a profit-making business. Our health is not in the forefront of these products whenever they make them. So what's really in the forefront, what's really the main point of making this product to be appealing to the taste, appealing to the senses. When you see a type of food product that it looks good in the eyes, and it smells good to the nose. It's all marketing so that we can actually get hooked on this food and you can keep spending while our health continuously deteriorates and our health continuously going down. And the quality of our life is not getting better to live life in a diseased state. The cow didn't say that. No, he didn't have to say that, but God said that. He, everybody has to die. 
Okay. God also gave instruction what to eat and how to eat. Living like that is an unbalanced way of living life. Basically, catastrophizing that we are going to die, so we should live life based on our feelings, eat what feels good in the moment. This is a self-defeating foundation to live life. It's not going to be helpful to you. So, and so, I enjoy this. You know you talk like a food addict. Mm -hmm. You're addicted to food. Yes. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? No, I'm happy. Just like an addict. As long as you can get your drug with all those chemicals and right. steroids and estrogen and nitrites in it, you're happy. Yeah. This is not anything? No, not to me. I mean, a bird wouldn't eat that and be full. You mean I'm stupid for eating this apple? Yes. And if that's all you eat, yes. Well, I was planning on eating maybe oh. another apple. Oh, I see. So I'm twice as stupid? Sure. I have bologna. Yes, you can have some of my bologna. Yeah, I eat this bologna. Get some fries. B-O-L-O-G-N-A. This, this, this is made from the scrap meat that's on the slaughterhouse floor. They have a machine that separates it. So this is pork and chicken and beef all mixed together. Plus it's spoiled. But it's all one color. Right. That's because they put dye in it. They dye this rotten meat. It's actually green. Then they put perfume in it so it make it smell fresh. That's what you got up. That's what you call a burger. First it's not even ham. So why are they calling it a burger? A hamburger. You're going to make me sick. I'm not going to make you sick. I'm making you happy. You, you see that? That's a fried potato. Yes. So it's going to stay in your body too long. Mm -hmm. And it's going to cause constipation. And it's cause fermentation. Then you can get funky arms because the fumes be coming out through your arms. Then your feet's going to stink because all that's rotten and stinking in your body. So the fumes are going to come out your body. You're going to need deodorant soap after a while. But you need it anyway. No, you don't. Yes, you do need deodorant. You do. You do too. Because you, because you're eating rotten food. The natural deodorant is chlorophyll. If you eat chlorophyll, you wouldn't need the deodorant. Chlorophyll is a natural deodorant. And would you, would you put chlorophyll in your mouth? <sighs> you mean to tell me you don't use any deodorant? It's chlorophyll that I use. Chlorophyll. Where do you get chlorophyll from? Fresh green leafy vegetables, romaine lettuce, spinach. Eating it raw, you get the chlorophyll. It's a natural deodorant. Now, don't you feel better? I, what I'm telling you is that is a French fry. It's boiled in oil. It's not even fried. It's boiled in oil. That's what you call in a hamburger. It's not even ham. Isn't there something wrong with this? You're supporting your addiction. Yeah. Mm. I do something in life. I've been so, eating this all my life. And? And I like it. It's because good. you were trained to eat it right. all your life. But I don't like apples that well. Mm -mm. I mean, I don't want to eat it every day. I mean, by now it's clear that we can identify that she's an emotional eater. But you would eat french fries every day? No, I don't like french fries that well either. I eat them every now and then, like I would an apple. She got weak when saying that. You heard her voice cracking, like, mm -hmm. I eat mango. It's like me saying, I eat m m mango as every now and then. Uh -huh. But you wouldn't eat a hamburger every day either. You no, eat that I, don't, I don't care that what, much. What do you either. eat natural every what day? What do we eat? I don't know if it's natural, but I eat rice. I eat chicken. What, what kind of rice? Brown rice? Mm -hmm. Wild I rice? I don't like brown rice. You don't like natural rice? I like white rice. You like rice yes. that's been made in a factory? Yes. yes. I eat wild rice sometimes, but I don't want it every day. I like that white That French rice. fry has been bleached white. Yeah. You notice they never turn black at McDonald's? But Michael Jackson was bleached white. But the French did. fries don't sing. Let's keep it on the French fries. That's been bleached white. <laughs> okay. Plus they spray sugar on it. I love sugar. That's why you're addicted to the French fries. Right. And they put sugar in the meat and the sugar in the bread and the sugar in the cheese. And that's what makes it good. If it was raw, it wouldn't be good, would it? No. This is really sad. It is. You're addicted to sugar. Yes, I am. You're a sugar drunkard. Yes. Don't you think you need to go and detox? No. no. Why don't you just try it? Let, let's just try I it. I can't go a day without sugar. You can't go a day without no. sugar? Let, let's just try it. Just, just pretend that you can take something to help get rid of your craving for sugar. Would you try it? No, because I like sweet stuff. Sweet stuff reminds you of love because you got sweet stuff on your birthday, right? Yes. You got sweet stuff in Christmas, and when you do something nice in school, they give you sweet stuff. So maybe what you're missing is the love you associate with the sugar. Yeah. Maybe you have an emotional problem. Maybe. So you're looking for sugar to satisfy no, your, I don't. your love. No, I don't. So why are you I eating it? I eat sweet stuff because I'm I like addicted it. to sweet I stuff. I like it, just like you like that apple. I like sweet stuff. 
You're gonna compare an apple with some yeah, white sugar? Yeah, because an apple is nasty. It's not it's good. It's the color you don't like? No. If it was black, but it's, you would it eat doesn't it? do anything for you. It not for me. Well, it, it worked for Eve quite well. Well, that was Eve. <laughs> see, that was Eve. So you're gonna eat this recycled meat? Yes. Scraps from the slaughterhouse yes. floor. Yes. Then you're gonna eat a boiled in oil potato. Yes. Because you never I, seen. How any. can you come up with all this stuff? Because I know who made the food. The Greeks how did this. How do you know everything? You don't know I don't everything. know everything. I only but know you about say food. Things like people want I to eat. I only it, know about food. I only know about food. I don't know everything. No. All right. So I'm trying to help you eat better. Oh, I want you to eat this long. nasty apple. I don't want to. How about a green apple? No. How about a yellow apple? No. How about a banana? I'll eat a banana. White? It's not white. Yellow? Bananas, it's yellow. Black? No, I don't want a black banana. That's when it's ripe. That's when you're supposed to eat it. That's when it has potassium in it. What is it that you eat that's ripe? What do you eat that's ripe? I eat the apple. But it's not good. How can you just eat stuff just because? You have to have something that's good for you that you I like. Eat to live, to nourish my body. Well, I eat I'm for health. I'm eating because I'm old and I'm going to die anyway. And I eat what I like because that's what I want to do. You're eating because it satisfies uh, your taste. No, not, yeah. You said it tastes good. You never said nutrition. Good. I'm talking about nutrition. But You're talking about taste. I'm not worried about nutrition at this stage of my life. I'm people, really not. People eat for nutrition. Well, I don't. I eat because I like it's good, tastes good, does me well. I feel so happy when See I See that? We're back to your emotions again. Yeah, you eat because it makes it. you feel good. And it tastes good. No, no, no. We eat for nutrition. We eat to nourish you our body. You eat for nutrition. You I eat because it tastes good. I eat good. because I like it. I want it. I need it. Oh, my And gosh. I'm going to eat it. Oh, my gosh. Sound sounds like you would it. kill for this stuff. Probably would. If I was hungry enough. But this food has been perfumed and deodorized to smell like food and to look like food, but it's not food. It's cooked and the minerals are too hard and your body can't break them down. And since they use the oil, we call that a trance oil. It's a type of oil that's heated above 112, so the body can't break down the oil, so it turns it into waste and clogs up the veins and arteries and causes bypasses and all that sort of thing. The only person a person can say in defense of eating it is it tastes good. The Food and Drug Administration is manipulated to do these things, and that keeps people ignorant. So she doesn't know what's in the food she's eating. Well, you used to eat it at some point in your life. You ate it. You were a kid. You ate what your mother gave you, right? Yes. Okay, so you ate the same thing I and ate. And at a certain point, my mother sent me to school so I can learn things, and I mm -hmm. learned better. My but mother died know? of diabetes, high blood pressure. She had cataracts, glaucoma, and hemorrhoids. Mm -hmm. My mother. And she mm -hmm. said she wished she had started over with eating the right way. And she was a nurse. Mm -hmm. and she told me these things. So I'm telling you these things. Okay. If you don't want to eat right for yourself, just eat right so the children can see it's another way to eat. Do something that's greater well, than I think yourself. You should, if you want to do that, start with the small children. I'm too old now. But Doesn't they can look to I you. Eat. You're the elder and they'll look no, to you well, they for look wisdom. To me, they're going to be eating cake, ice cream, cookies, donuts, mashed potatoes and gravy, fried chicken. Fried dead chicken. Fried dead chicken. Mm. Because you, you don't know what happened to the broccoli. It grows out there, dogs pee on it, cats, everything. And you still eat it? You think that's good? Well, fish swim in pee and bowel movement right. too. That's right, and they eat slop and worms and pee. Everybody talks about fish. But, fish is so good for you. But then you're eating the fish that ate the worms well, and the slop, so you're eating the same thing they ate. Right. But I ain't around telling people not to eat anything either. I don't care what somebody else eats. But you are, you are elder, and you're supposed to pass on wisdom to the I children. Pass on wisdom. Get a job, work hard, go to school. And eat hamburgers and french fries. Do the right thing. Fries. Don't steal. Don't break in nobody's house. That's all I'm going to teach them. And eat french fries and yeah, hamburgers. Yeah, they want them. So, mm -hmm. Out of the I'm love in your heart. I tell them they can eat apple and stuff. And you they just tell them they can eat, eat broccoli. I, but I, I'm going to have some good stuff in my house. Don't you, don't you think a picture's worth a thousand words? Sometimes. So if they things. see you doing something, you remember they call it modeling behavior? Don't pass mm -hmm. the buck. You're responsible. I am going to pass the buck. I've already done what I'm supposed to do for my children and my grandchildren. It's and not over all until all it's old. over. It's not over yet. But it's over for me. No, it's, it's not. It's my time As long now. as you're opening your mouth, mm -hmm. it's not over. And I'm going to keep on opening up this mouth because I like it. Because you like the way it tastes. That's right. And I'm trying to get more mileage out of you. Well, I'm going to put high octane gas in you. I already had the high octane now gas. Now you're doing lead and now. And now I'm going 
You're going to all let it out. I'm going diesel now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, I'm going to take the first step to recovery, and I'm going to admit that I have a problem, and I'm not going to eat this bologna. Thank you. Well, that's so nice of you. Well, I got a problem, I'm glad too, but I'm going to keep him. right on eating this. But you keep on encouraging him. Okay, you just keep right on eating. Apple well, and I want you to eat good, too, because no, I want you to I be around. I am going to eat good. I'm going right. to eat good. The bottom line is we are natural beings. We have been taught and trained to see food as something that we have to engineer, enhance the taste to make it super easy to consume. New types of food are coming out monthly. Think about it for as long as you've been alive. Think about your parents, your grandparents, your great great grandparents. Our bodies still stay the same. We haven't changed or evolved physically. Our anatomy, basically our entire body haven't changed. So added new features, updates, or versions. Then why do we think these new types of fake food is the way to go? Let's face it, whether we pay attention to it or not, we young people look up to the elders as a form of a model to how we should live life. This is an impulse that we are automatically inclined to. While she's an elder inside almost all of us, she's an elder with not just respect, but more of a living library or living testament of knowledge, wisdom, and self-awareness of a, a way to be. It is true. Our parents don't know everything and we got to learn to still love them regardless. Just as we can see the imperfection in us, it's the same way that our parents are not perfect as well. So they did, they did the best that they could and they don't always know the best way to eat. As a holistic health coach, looking at the person that is um, overweight or obese, you can picture it like this, that the person is carrying along a lot of dead waste in their bodies that is not really an appealing way of living when you actually know what fat is truth of the matter is that type of thinking is not self-serving it's not good or healthy or balanced for the body to carry around fat and waste deposit and think that it's sexy it just doesn't make sense you know the body is carrying along fat and waste and that is seen as sexy it just doesn't make sense thanks for watching don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel and please share this video to your favorite people to find solutions for the health challenges.